Today I'm going to tell you how to get free photography gear. Without getting arrested. All of these cameras and lenses here were either free or they cost so little that I can use them until I'm tired of them and then sell them for a profit. Now to get free camera gear you have to buy some stuff and then sell what you don't need. First of all, you have to know your prices. For example, two weeks ago I saw this Panasonic GH4 for sale. And uh, I know it's a good camera, but not many people want them anymore, but they're still very useful. So I looked at a recent $1 reserve and it went for $355. That means that at the very least, someone out there is the person who bid second on that is prepared to pay $350 for it. So I know I'm prepared to pay at least $350 just for that camera body to get my money back. But then there was some other gear with it. That's a 14 to 140 millimeter lens, five batteries, some other bits and pieces, a small rig cage. It looks like a reasonable deal. But the beginning bid was $400 and the buy now price was $1,000. Nobody put it on their watch list. Nobody else bid on it. So I thought I'll put a $400 bid on it. At the very least, I, I lose the auction and I get to bid on it next time and maybe I can get it for a, a slightly higher price. But when the auction ended, the buyer sent the seller sent a fixed price offer of four hundred dollars, so I happily accepted it. So it arrived yesterday. Pretty good condition. The small rig cage, the newer fourteen to one forty millimeter lens, which is a really good lens. The body is in really good condition. Everything was working nicely and there's also a bag for the lens, brand new unused strap, HDMI adapter plug, an external battery power supply, you can plug it into the camera and plug into 220 volts and the camera can go as long as you want, the charger, another adapter, and four batteries to add to my pile. So that's a pretty good deal because this 14 to 140 millimeter lens, I see people listing them for about $550. Although there's a big difference between what they are listed for and what they actually sell for. So I'm pretty sure I could get three or $400 for that lens on its own. And there's a good chance that someone out there will pay $100 for just this cage. That leaves me with another GH4 body to add to my pile. The other trick to remember is to buy bulk deals. Buy a camera body with some lenses and a flash or whatever other gear because not many people want to go out there and buy a bulk deal. So people think they're saving time by just selling it off as a bulk deal. But most people either just want the camera body or the body with one lens or one of the lenses. So just buy a bulk deal and sell off what you don't want. But as I say, you have to know your prices. The other tip is to take your time. If you wait until you need a lens, let's say you want a, a 25mm 1.7 lens, you got an event on this weekend and you want to go out and buy a lens now, you're going to have to pay either brand new price or what people are asking their, their elevated second hand prices that are overpriced. But just keep your eye on auctions and when a good price comes up you buy it or when you buy it as a kit and sell everything else off and you've got one free lens, that's when you get free gear. The other thing you have to be prepared to do is to walk away from a deal. You might be watching this item and think, oh, I have to have that and, 
and you bid on it and then eventually you, you start wanting it more and more because you're bidding on it. Just be prepared to step back and say someone else can take it for that price. I'm waiting for bargains. So the story on each of these, this GH3, which is actually a very good camera. No one wants them anymore because they're 12 or 13 years old, but it's really useful if you're filming a wedding or something like that, just put it up on a tripod. The good thing about the GH3 and 4 and 5 is they all take the same batteries. So these are batteries I've got from previous auctions. They're obviously not all amazing. These are the four batteries that just came with this other camera. Plus one original battery. Now you can tell that this person cared for their gear. They've gone and numbered and dated each battery. So this is um, 2019. So it's not too bad. These batteries last pretty well. But this one's November 2018. These were all bought in November 2018. Castar, it's not a bad brand. They just don't last as long as the proper Nikon, uh, Panasonic batteries. But all of these batteries have come with deals where I've ended up with a free camera body. So sometimes you can sell them off separately if you don't want them. Most of the time the batteries aren't worth selling off. But there's a good chance that one day if I got rid of all of this gear I could get $10 each for these. There's $120 sitting there. So this one, this GH3, one of the reasons I bought it is it takes the same batteries. So I've got enough batteries for it. The battery life lasts forever on these things. This, this will probably record for eight hours on one good battery. And the quality is fine. If I take a picture with a GH3 and the latest GH6, you're not going to notice the difference in good light. So it's a really good camera. This one cost me the most. I paid $150 for this body. That's about 100 American dollars. And I just know that I can use it for as long as I want and sell it for that again and get my money back. So that's the whole principle of buying stuff. And as long as you know you're going to get your money back, you don't have to worry too much about it. This one here, a few years ago, someone was selling off all their video making gear. They sold this GH4 body in really good condition with four lenses for $800. I sold the four lenses for a thousand dollars so this camera gave me two hundred dollars and a free body the lens I bought when there it was a really good price for about a hundred dollars they generally sell for about 200 second hand 150 200 there's another GH4 body here I bought with I think two lenses and I sold the lenses off for the price purchase price that's a free GH4 body they're really good cameras, 4K video. Um, one thing you have to remember is that older gear that has been sitting around for a while, you may have to, the owner may not know that there's anything wrong with it because they haven't used it for a while, but these little um, focus buttons here, on two of these bodies, they were left on one setting and they were a little bit tight to come loose, but then they were fine. So these things, after time, they're going to start freezing up and buttons but you first thing you do is when you get it you take it you move all the dials move all these levers you press everything test everything because you can't wait for a year before you go back to the seller and say look i need something back on this you got to sort it out straight away and everyone has been happy to help me i had one bad experience where i bought a box full of camera gear lenses worth about 170 dollars and it had about three Nikon lenses in a film body. And the, owner, the seller did, generally didn't know, but there was fungus in all of them. I contacted him and I said, look, I don't want to put the bubonic plague with the rest of my camera gear. I want my money back on it. And he said to me, you got a good deal on it. You know, you can sell those bits off and get your money back. I said, no, I want you to give me my money back. And he refused. So the power of social media went and found his business online. On Google reviews, I left a bad review. You can't trust this person. And um, 
he contacted me the next day. He said, oh, that's not fair. I was leaving reviews on my business. I said, well, what you're doing to me is not fair. So he gave me my money back and I sent him the gear back. So there are risks involved, but majority of the time, they're easy enough to sort out. And if you buy properly, one item that's no good isn't going to make a difference to your purchase. This Nikon D40, people don't want them anymore. They're 6 megapixel cameras, but they take really good images. 6 megapixels is a two-page magazine spread. You don't need any more than it. I've taken a lot of really nice pictures with my previous Nikon D40, and I had a 18-200 to 200 lens on it. And the fact is, because I always had it with me, I took most of my really good pictures when something, a really good scene presented itself, a nice sunset or something. I had it with me because it was the cheapest camera and it was handy to just just have there. Uh, I bought the body with two lenses for $120. I sold one lens for $120. I've got one free lens there and a free camera body. And this particular lens, I bought a kit, a D7500 with four lenses for $1,200. Now, you've got to work a bit for it, but I sold everything else for $1,200 and I have one free 18 to 140mm lens. So that's what happened with that one. This one, a Nikon D70, I bought it for my special experiments because it can do one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed and synchronized flash. And I can generate and photograph a spark at one eight thousandth of a second. So this was for special experiments, really old, ugly six megapixel camera, tiny little screen, but if it's free, who cares? Because I also sold off the lenses that came with this. And I think this camera gave me about $50 back plus a free body. So the deals are out there. You just have to know your prices, take your time, buy bulk deals. If you buy one item, you're not going to get a, a deal on it. But just as an example, there's an auction I'm watching now. And I saw this Olympus EM5 Micro Four Thirds. Current bid is $500. Um, there's three lenses there. Now, who wants to buy a camera with three lenses? Nobody. There's nobody on this planet looking for that camera and those three lenses in one deal. So straight away, the seller has shot themselves in the foot because less people are going to bid on it. They'd be better off splitting it up into separate items. But there's some useful, useful bits there. The 100 to 300 millimeter lens we look it up, you can see I've looked it up before, a thousand dollars. So that lens itself would be a thousand dollars to buy new, but if you take the new price and cut it in half, it's worth about five hundred dollars second hand. So four hundred dollars would be a good price to pay for that lens. I'd sell it for five hundred. We got the Olympus 80, uh, the 85 millimeter equivalent, the, no, sorry, 90 millimeter equivalent, the 45 millimeter 1.8. It's a really good lens. There are quite a few of them around, but they sell for about $300. If you're prepared to wait $300, if you want to sell it within a week, $250. So there I'm going to say we've got $400 plus $250 is $650. The next one is a 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter 1.7, they're about four or five hundred dollars new. That's worth a quick two hundred dollars. So I've got eight hundred and fifty dollars selling lenses alone. The EM5, the last one I sold the body for two hundred and fifty dollars. It would be a, maybe a two or three week sale to sell it for two hundred dollars, but a one week sale to get a hundred and fifty dollars for it. So here we got a hundred and fifty dollars plus $850, we've got $1,000 worth of selling stuff there. I will bid up to $800 on that because I know $800 is a bargain to sell off that stuff quickly and have either a free camera body or that 20 millimeter 1.7. I don't have one of them. I had one of them before. It was the older version, which was a bit slower, but keep it for a while. If I don't like it, I'll sell it again. And realistically, that kit that I'd be prepared to pay $800 for, I could probably get $1,200 back on it. 
or sell the bits off and have the big lens which might come in useful because I don't have a, a really long lens like that and I'd have a free lens that I could use for as long as I want and then sell it off quickly for $400 one day. So you've got to know your prices, you've got to be prepared to walk away from the deal if it's getting higher there, you get, you get a bit hopeful when you start bidding on these things, eventually you buy something and you don't get your money back on it. So I've got to say to myself, $800 on that kit, I'll be happy to pay that much, I'm not bidding any more. If someone else takes it, good luck to them, if I get it, I'm happy. What are you looking over there for? You're looking the wrong way. So, those are my tips. Uh, there's, like I say, there's some good deals out there. All of this gear is either free or, or I could sell it quickly. That 17, uh, 7 to 14 millimeter lens, it's about a $1,200 lens. People advertise them for about $600. I saw it at 250 and I bought it. And it's a really good lens, it proved very useful to me. So I'm happy with that purchase and I know if I get tired of it one day or get a better lens or cheaper one, I might buy another kit with one of these. I'll take the worst of the two, sell it off for more than I paid for that. So the deals are out there, you have to know your prices. Just a tip, lately Nikon has stopped making F-mount camera bodies and lenses. So the prices are going to drop. Be careful of thinking you're seeing a bargain. Because the prices are going to just keep dropping. They're still very good cameras, very good lenses, but people are going to start dumping them. And the market will be flooded with cheap Nikon lenses. So if you shoot Nikon, you've got the older bodies, you're happy. But be very, very, very wary of just jumping into a deal like the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8 that everyone loved. It came out at about $1,200. Um, initially they were selling second hand for about eight or nine hundred and that dropped to about the last one I sold was about six hundred. Recently one went on auction and they got three hundred and fifty dollars for it. So you must know your prices. When you see something for sale and you think it's a good price, go on eBay maybe, look up what they're selling for. Look up what people are asking for them and remember what people are asking for them at, that are up there is not what they're selling for because they wouldn't be up there anymore. Knock off, find the lowest price and knock about 20% off that and think, right, it's worth about that much. Or look what they've sold for in the past. But hopefully that's been useful. And uh, go out there and find some bargains.